What is up, everybody? I'm Jay. I'm Christy. And this is the Trading Floor Podcast. We are back. New year, new us, Chris. Yeah, I know. Season two, which is super exciting. No, oh, um, Chris, she didn't believe this, but I think Netflix would pick us up. I mean, see. Uh, yeah, we did. I season, literally. Season three. Just, season three is a possibility. But no, guys, this is season two. We're, we're going to start over with episode one again. So not to confuse y'all because the episodes are going to slowly stack and stack higher and higher. But we're super excited. We're very happy for everybody in 2022 who all the love and support. Um, I believe I got an email yesterday and we were around 5,500 to like 6,000 downloaded listens, which was really cool. Um, but with that being said, we're going to be changing up the style this season. And so as of now, as you can see in this podcast, we have some amazing guests that we'll soon introduce. But um, we're going to be having uh, these podcast style um, every other week. That way we can kind of give you all some new content in the sense that in between these weeks, we're going to be doing me and Christy. We'll probably add on some new guests. Maybe, maybe these guys will come back, but we're going to be doing more visual and lecture style podcasts where it'll be mainly just on YouTube where me and Christy might go over previous uh, weeks, marked up charts, uh, maybe go over marked up charts that day or go over things uh, such as topics that we pulled in the TTF community, because a lot of people want to see things that, it's hard to do in a podcast type of style. It's easier to show visually. And so we're we're super excited to be doing that. So I'll hand it over to you, Chris. Let's start off this episode. Yeah. Hi, guys. Welcome back to season two. Uh, we have a couple of guests here. So as Jay said, we are going to be doing like a normal podcast style for this one. So those of you guys are listening, go ahead and keep listening to this. Our next episode, though, will likely be more based like for the YouTube people, because like we said, we asked what you guys want to see. A lot of it requires seeing charts or seeing things. And uh, those of you who are just listening are going to be missing out on a lot of really good information. So every other week we'll be alternating that way. But this week is a full on listen episode. So if you guys are listening out there on Spotify or whatever your favorite podcasting uh, welcome places, back. welcome back and keep listening. You'll be fine for this one. We have two really fun guests here who we've been trying to get on for a little bit now and trying to figure out where to place this episode because we're like, it's such an important topic and it's really not talked about openly enough, which is mindset and the trading psychology aspects. But we finally have Roxy and Ian on here and we figured 2023, first episode back, it made the most sense to go with the whole new year, new you, clean mindset, starting fresh. So we're really excited to do this. And we were like, this is going to be the first episode for season two. So thank you, Roxy and Ian, for coming on so much. I don't want to go on too much of a rant. I want you guys to be able to introduce yourselves because uh, we know how great you guys are. So so how about you tell everyone else who is out there in viewer world that maybe don't know who you are, a little bit about who you are and like a little bit about your background. Like, just tell us about who's Roxy, who's Ian. So Roxy, do you want to go first? Yeah, happy to. Um, so yeah, hey, everybody. You probably uh, potentially heard my voice, potentially not, uh, depending on when you joined. But yeah, I'm Roxy and uh, I've been trading, I think it's a little over three years now and uh, profitably trading probably a little over, yeah, it's, a, it's over a year now. And uh, yeah, I help to uh, operate the mindset room with uh, Ian. And uh, my background coming into trading, um, I work in or worked now in IT. I guess that's a little drop there. I don't anymore. Um, I am now a full-time trader, um, oh. though I do have some passive income streams because I'm kind of one of those weird people who doesn't believe in just all my eggs in one basket. So True. not weird. Not weird. Not weird <laughs> we say it literally actually, all the time. It's very normal. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, for me, the transition to full-time trading, um, I traded for a while before I felt comfortable making that transition. I wanted to see a year of profitability. Um, that was kind of a, a milestone for me. Uh, Smart and safe. And I yeah. appreciate you making sure you give good <laughs> advice to the viewers. <laughs> so, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I love uh, mindset and, and talking about it and being supportive and encouraging of other traders from that perspective. It's a passion topic for me because uh, it wasn't the technicals that were the hardest thing for me in trading. It was hands down the mindset side. I had a lot of work to do on myself, really, to get to the point where I could, um, best way to put it, sit with my emotions while trading and be able to, you know, handle what was happening. So, you know, yeah. taking losses, learning how to do that. That was a hard one for me. That's I have awesome. a question for yeah. you. Given your background in IT, 
and you already explained that you did struggle with mindset the most in this. Do you think that your breed, uh, because it, you know the engineers and the IT people, and I find yeah. that the technical part of people who come from these backgrounds, they don't have a hard time with the technical and the markups and all that. It is the mindset, it's the emotional control because in your worlds, from what I can gather, you're all very rule-based and yes. like you, your minds think in these structured. steps and these algorithms, right? Absolutely. You kind of think structured. Exactly. Yeah. So did you find that part was not where you struggled, but it was like the actual live of placing it and like now the emotional control. And were you, were you almost overwhelmed and like super surprised about how these emotions were brought up from you? Absolutely. So, yes. Yeah. That is what I ran into. Exactly. It, the technicals were I gotta be honest, easy to pick up yeah. for me, yeah. um, to be honest. And so that wasn't the issue. The thing I struggled most with, I think I probably experienced everything in the spectrum of FOMO, revenge trading, like yeah. fear of loss, like the whole nine yards. The that, holy that trinity. Was the oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. So yeah, yeah definitely. Um, your, your logical mind can help you, but it can also be a real hindrance because mm -hmm like you said, in the job, in my world, I don't really have to handle that as much. Things are much more logical. Like I can go A to B to C, you know, that yeah. type of thing. The if then, and that's the expectation that I brought into trading and found out there was a whole larger component to it, at least for me, a uh, much larger component. And that was the mindset side. I find that quite often with uh, people who are are like you and like Jay and you know you guys have met Bear and Sven if you have been yeah. viewers and all my engineer friends have this uh, mindset coming into it like if then then this like it will happen like this like Prepare you guys think like laws you know scientific laws you feel like this should happen because I've prepared and, and when it doesn't the I yeah. think the emotional surprise of like what now like you don't yeah. know what to do yet and then yes. learning how to compose yourself and still stay in the market and uh, safely be trading and smartly yeah. trading is definitely a whole new beast to manage so yeah. thank you for sharing that um yeah. ian how about you share a little bit about yourself with us tell us who's ian where are you from what how long you've been trading and what made you get into mindset well, I am Ian, also known as Alp27HD on Discord. Um, I am 42. I basically have worked since I was 18 um, in the same job. So I'm oh, approaching wow. my 25th year now. Um, I work as a compliance manager. So I deal with all the uh, health and safety, IT, technical, mobiles, vehicles, and anything else they want to throw at me. Um, I opened an eToro account for my sins in 2021, had never touched the market, never invested, never done anything like that. Uh, opened it up and invested in the usual Apple, uh, Microsoft, mm -hmm. etc. cetera, um, monday.com or whatever it is to try and, you know, thinking that'll do well, you know. Um, and it was going up, going down, moving around. Um, and then I thought, well, I'd, I'd obviously seen that that was considered probably swing trading. Um, so then I, I joined a group um, recommended by Artie, uh, which you guys were involved with previous, basically was involved in that group and slowly but surely met up with, you know, the likes of Brutus and started to learn to day trade. And that was August 21. And the basically the mistake I made was passing a funded challenge in the first six weeks. Yes. Because <laughs> um, through, I think, good fortune rather than skill um, and blew it within six days of getting the live account um, and then started to get better. There was some strategies I was using that were very, very much rules based, very strict. You enter here. Why do I enter there? Well, we don't need to tell you that. Well, you just enter there. Um, as most, I think, beginners do, they they enter and a lot of the, you know, the strategies that are suggested are, are rules based. So I started off with that and passed another 20K funded account in December of 21 and blew that within three days. Um, mainly from the greed aspect, I think. I think I looked at it and thought, I've done it now. I can, you know, you share it in the uh, in the group. You tell everyone that you're, you've are you passed this and you, you're, you're ready to go, et cetera, et cetera. And then you have to either keep it to yourself or come crawling back with kind of your tail between your legs. Mm -hmm. And that taught me very quickly that mindset is quite a massive component. Um, started working quite closely with Roxy with regards to things like um, 
we have this thing where we call pass the test, where it's basically just you focus on your one trade, you pass that test by doing that trade, whether it's a win or a loss, you execute perfectly to your rules, and then you move on to the next one. And the idea is to kind of stack passing the test. So you, you know, you do one correctly, then two correctly, then three correctly. So Roxy got me basically, whilst it wasn't specifically, you know, me trading in the, in the sense of price action and market structure, it was a case of my indicator says go, so I will go. And my mindset with that is I will execute perfectly every time. And that really did help me. Um, unfortunately, the strategy wasn't quite up to scratch, so um, I wasn't able to pass a funded challenge based off that, but it certainly gave me kind of an ironclad mindset. Um, and then obviously you guys invited me to work with Roxy in the mindset room, and Yay. we get a lot of pleasure from uh, basically helping people out, talking people. It's basically we kind of sell it as a, a safe space for people to come, you know, the only stupid question is the one you don't ask. And we allow people to come along, you know, sharing the good stuff, sharing the bad stuff. And we try and talk them through the kind of psychology with the lessons that we've learned. So that's that's me. I'm working full time at the moment, trying to kind of squeeze trading in around that. Um, and, you know, wife, daughter, 14 year old daughter. So she's sure. all that good stuff. So, uh, yeah, that that's me in a nutshell. But I'm enjoying my time and enjoying helping people out with Roxy. Dude, August 2021, time flies when you've been having fun, huh? Oh yeah. <laughs> but we're gonna we're gonna get back to that passing uh each like uh passing the test on each single trade soon. But what I kind of wanted to spin back to, uh, Roxy, you brought this up, uh, is the fact that y'all help you and Ian both help running the mindset room in the trading floor. And so, what is, what is the mindset room? Why is it there? And um, what have what have you found? that's been really awesome about that room. Well, it's Go our ahead, home Roxy, away from home. <laughs> <laughs> that's our home away from home. Yeah. Um, the mindset room is there to help people who, when they get to the point where they understand the technicals, they get into live trading and they hit that oh crud moment of now I'm experiencing all these emotions in live trading or even in demo. Um, and they go, how do I handle FOMO. How do I handle revenge trading? It, this was so easy when I was just back testing, and it seemed like it was mm. going to work just fine. Dude. And when the, they they get on the actual you know charts and start sitting there and having to actually take the trades and all those emotions set in, the mindset room is there to help those who find their way to us. We support them, we encourage them, we help them through the process of dealing with those emotions. Because um, first off great community. That's what we're here to do. We're here not only to teach how to trade, but also to uh, support you through the process. So um, I think in a nutshell, Mindset Room is there to to support the psychology side and building your trader's mindset, learning to deal with the emotions. Yeah, a lot of people kind of neglect that too. But yeah, I do agree with you. The fact that people kind of forget the time lapse in between whenever they're back testing, it's literally just instant like that whenever you're taking yeah. trades and then you go to live and then you're like, I actually have to sit three hours mm -hmm. to let this trade play out when yeah. I could have just looked right and played it through and it's done. And so like that, yes. that's a huge psychological barrier people have to get rid of for sure. Yeah. The back testing, uh, you know, one is you can, if you are back testing a certain way, you can look ahead. So there's a little bias there potentially. Number two, even if you're doing it in replay mode, there is an instant gratification that comes from back testing that you are not getting when you sit in a live market. And that is another emotion of learning how to not tinker and toy around with things, overanalyze, because you didn't have to do it in your back testing. It was instant, just plus quick replay and see, you know, watch the candles print quickly. Whereas, you know, in a live market, you have to now sit on your hands for a little bit longer yeah. until that trade does play out. And that's that takes some mental power. And to be I able find to flip that, that switch in your brain. Yeah, I think in the, in the very beginning for newer traders, that's probably the hardest part. Like once you do follow all the rules and get to the back testing and all that, watch just learning how to be patient to wait and let the trade just play out uh, safely and not tinker too much can be a, yeah. a problem. Stop for wasting sure. time. Yeah, yeah. Well, a common um, one I also get is that uh, I'll get messages about the first time they placed a trade and the candle was actually moving in real time and they couldn't just place it like, like we say in back testing at the open of the candle. 
the candles yes. already moving on them. It's not exactly mm -hmm. where they expected the be. spread it's as well. As yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not as yeah. easy to put it in there. There's a lot of things that that they're not initially anticipating um, yeah. when taking their trade. So. I appreciate you talking about the guidance of the community and say, because yeah. I think that it's not just for newer traders or beginner traders. I was just trying to make my point there that even though some people might not feel it's as important as is at some point you will need it. And yeah. even myself, like I've talked about this in season one, going through strategy war and stuff, like I still struggle. Like I have my own like issues and little demons that still creep in. Am I much more controlled? Yes. Do I know they're there? Am I aware of what I'm dealing with when I'm going through those emotions? Yes. That comes with learning how to like control the mindset, but does it mean it goes away? No way. It doesn't no. go away. It never will. And if you say it does, then I don't, you know, I think you're a liar. And <laughs> I do. I, I will say that. As well because, as good. Yeah. I get asked that all the time. They're like, you just seem to be calm in your trading. You're executing well. And I'm like, A, I don't do that every day. And B, I still have all the same emotions. I've just learned how to basically not react, but take action and to kind of sit with them. I know they're there. I know they're going to be there. It, yeah. you know, the and calmness see when you is lose the fact so many that trades, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah. but it's it comes down to um like you know i am an emotional person i'm a very emotional person but i've learned how to compartmentalize that and yeah. like learn how to i don't want to say shut it off but i've because i mean they still creep in but i've learned how to look at it like okay i'm aware that i'm experiencing these feelings and then learning tips and tricks as to how to control it and if i'm not able to control it learning how to say i just need to not trade today or i need yes. to walk away so let's get into some more information about you guys. So let's segue into some tips and tricks situation. So you guys in the community, you offer mindset shorts and you also do uh, like the mindset tips. So tell us a little bit about like, what are the mindset shorts? What are the tips? What's their purpose? And you know, where, what would you benefit? Like, where would you say people would benefit from using them in their trading journeys? Go ahead. Yeah. Ian. With regards to the shorts, we basically pick one topic um, we did, I think, originally speak to the community and say, do you have topics that you struggle with, be it FOMO, over trading? Um, but we basically pick one topic and Roxy and I will have a chat for 15, 20 minutes. Um, and we basically just discuss it, discuss our coping mechanisms for it, how we would go about um, tackling certain topics. I think we've covered things like um, the importance of backtesting from a mental standpoint, you know, the confidence that gives you, it's kind of like um, setting your, like very much like uh, Jay said, you do so much backtesting, it does give you that confidence to take trades, knowing that you can have five losses in a row and it's not the end of the world. And by, you know, by backtesting, it gives you that mental fortitude, whether it's um, trading one instrument we've looked into, we've looked into taking a break. Um, so we, we basically tackle a topic and then release it. And the general feedback has been quite good. And as I say, it's it, it's one of those, it, it's good to, to be able to share our experiences on a specific topic and obviously put it out there to the community and say you know is the stuff you want us to chat about you know what is causing you issue at any given time and you know we've got maybe another 10 15 topics written down that we're ready to discuss over the rest of 2023 so it's it, it's exciting that's awesome yeah yeah and the it's tips awesome. are good those the tips, uh, yeah. The tips. yeah and we're doing tips. we're doing a different take on it this year um for the tips, basically, this year we're adding in kind of imagery to tie in with it, a little kind of fun image and saying that goes with it that says, uh, you know, those tips will be, you know, something along the lines of really learning about what patience is, or um, I like to speak about comfy trading, like learning mm -hmm. to sit with your emotions and, you know, enjoy the process and like, this is a journey, not a race, things like that. And we kind of just we'll drop those into the community. And this time around, we're gonna have images and, and things to go with them that you can kind of throw up as like a background on your computer. You can just glance through them, you know, while you're trading, whatever it is, there's something kind of fun to go with them. But these tips are really meant to be uh, thought provoking, inspirational. And we've had a lot of great feedback that they frequently drop in a time where they resonate really well because somebody was actually really struggling with that at the time. And it just yeah. helped them through, but also gave them, um, something to, to work on that week, a specific focus, if, uh, for lack of a better way, put in it. So, yeah, I think that's, that's really what the shorts are about is, is, uh, you get to sit down with people who have, uh, been there for 15, 20 minutes and just kind of see their perspective and their experiences. And then the tips are just 
quick little things during the week that you get to kind of, you know, um, boost your mindset with. Yeah, we yeah. generally drop them like probably about half an hour after New York Open. Yeah. So usually we're trying to target when the most people will be on the Discord server. And then obviously, if somebody maybe has had some problems when they've, um, you know, well, a lot of people love to trade open because it's a lot of volume, but at the same time, it can easily destroy accounts, especially during news. Um, so we like to release them usually about half an hour to an hour after New York Open, where we know that will get a lot of traffic, but also it might be able to help people that are struggling at that moment. Yeah, That's smart. You know when they're, they're mm -hmm. going to really need that boost. Oh, yeah. <laughs> In the uh, so, but thank uh, you for sharing speaking that. on speaking on patience like you had brought up roxy yeah uh practice perseverance and patience the trifecta i feel like everybody like uses that in life except when it comes to trading it's the point <laughs> it's it's the, oh yeah it's like the only it's the only place where people panic and run away whenever there's an actual sell and so like whenever black friday everybody adores that but when it comes to uh, a market drop everybody is is like so eager like to take out so it's like how do how do people how do people deal with it? how are people able to what you what you had written down practice perseverance and patience like how do people go about doing that i think really the practice is being built in through your back testing and spending time in the market watching it watch how it flows watch how it moves watch your trades um, come to pass mark them out you need to be present with the market before you actually try to trade in it. I think that that is kind of one of those early beginner fundamental things. Everybody is so eager to jump in and trade because they wanna see those profits as soon as possible. And a lot of times, not only from the mindset wise, but um, to their accounts, they do a lot of damage. So the practice is where you need to start. And frankly, even once you are successful, keep doing it because just like an athlete would, they don't stop practicing. They don't stop um, continuing to get better. Um, and so that's continuing to learn and that's continuing to uh, look at the market um, each and every day, frankly, uh, even when I'm not trading, because at this point in time, I don't trade every day. I used to when I started and I overtraded and mm -hmm. I got into trouble, blew an account, did things like that. Now I look for quality over quantity. So a few trades, Okay. And I let that be, I let my account be. And if I want to trade more, I put that into another account. I trade a different account. I don't put it all into one and it's learning to, um, the persevere part of it really is learning about what your weaknesses are and learning how to, to challenge yourself, to get past those, to learn the steps that you really need to take to, uh, to see yourself through to the successful side. So, you know, it's that whole statistic of like 95% of traders fail that everybody mm -hmm. throws around. It's typically not that they're failing, they gave up, okay? Along the way somewhere, whether it's through losing money or determining that, hey, this wasn't gonna be a quick thing that happens in six months time, you know, yeah. or at least some people, some people it is six months, okay? But for I many agree. others, it's going to be a longer journey than that. I agree and with so that. I feel like, I don't mean to cut you off, but I just okay. feel like that 95 number people like to throw around and everyone's like, oh, you're so lucky you're in that 5%. And I'm like, I'm not lucky. I worked. Like, yeah. I worked. I'm stubborn. Yeah, I am yeah. a true Taurus. Uh... I am stubborn. <laughs> and I stuck with it and I persevered. Like, I lost a ton of money and I had a ton of learning lessons, but it took me, I mean, I've been doing this since 2015. It's taken me years to get to this level. And I pushed through it. And there were tons and tons of times I wanted to quit, but I didn't. So, like, like anybody, if you really truly are, if you in your heart know you're dedicating 100% to this and learning and really trying to learn it and pushing through and learning from your mistakes is a big thing too. Don't, you know, don't do the definition of insanity and keep doing the same thing over and over again and then expecting a different result and being like, I don't know, I've been doing it for 10 years and I don't know why I'm not making money, but you've been doing the same thing for 10 years. You know, you need to take that, um, that, perseverance, like you're saying, and push yourself to be a little uncomfortable, push yourself to learn from your mistakes. Don't look at a failure as like, well, I just can't do it. Look at your failure as like, what went wrong? How can I fix it? Like go back, reanalyze it and adjust. And like, that is the thing I think that people don't realize you don't, you're not lucky because you're just like blessed with this gift to be in the 5% club. Like you took that, like most people you talk to, like 
you made it there because you really, really worked hard at learning something and you, you really put the things. time. Yeah, you sacrifice, you put the time and the dedication in. And I think that that's something like, I just really don't like that number. <laughs> it's something no, I can no. that Eve. And I, I understand where you're going with it. I didn't mean to cut you. I just wanted to like tell people like, you don't, it sounds so like, oh, well, I'm just not meant to be in that 5%. Like, oh, I'm doomed. The odds are against me. It, and it's not that. It's it a, adds everybody it that hasn't push. truly put an effort into trading. That's 95. Right. Like, I don't know, like, 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 it'd be like 55 or 65 it shouldn't be as high yeah it might really be 95 and they do that based off how many people enter in a day and how many people actually make money like you know the the way they do it is uh different but the point is is like i don't like when people like always throw that number around i get why they do it like yes you know you have to be realistic that you the odds are stacked against you in this career but I don't, so I'm, there's I not great I'm, odds of getting through medical school either. Okay. Exactly. Rate on that. I'm okay. One of those so people, sports, so. professional sports. Yeah. Okay. Not great odds of making it into that. But exactly. all of those things have something in common and that's perseverance. So that's one of exactly. my three P's. Okay. Because it doesn't matter what you choose, committing to it fully and seeing it through, that's what's going to cause you to succeed here by and large. Okay. There are outside factors that can lead to somebody course, yeah. having to, to, to step away and not pursue it uh, and not finish. But by and large, those that do find success are going to, or because they persevered. Okay. Yeah. It's not impossible. So, and like, will somebody maybe do better than you? Yes. Will some, will you maybe be the best teacher? No. Could you be profitable? Yes. So like, that's, you know, just like athletes, like you're saying, you might not be the yeah. best athlete, but you could still be paid for a living. Yes. To do it, I, you love, know? I love my sports and analogies. I know you do Jay. So we're sticking with them. <laughs> well, it's you just the sports fact, people here. So we'll it's just do the it. fact that you need to reflect on what you truly want, because a lot of people fall in love with the idea of making money through trading. They don't really fall in love with trading and yes. sticking with sports. Sports, it champions are built because they put in the same amount of work when nobody's watching compared to and, when somebody and is watching. Let's not let's not defense forget your wins defense, all, defense wins championships, of course, too. But even back when I was still working full time and I was getting into trading, I sacrificed so many weekends just to back test because I really wanted to learn how to trade. And you need to look the it. art. You need to look oh, yeah. the craft. I think that's the, the big thing. And the results come. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, I think that. I think that's it. If you, I'd have quit. Well, one I'd have quit long ago if I yeah. wasn't for you guys in the community. Genuinely, I've I, I think it, it can be a very lonely sport um, yeah. trading, and I, I think you also have to love the art. I, I think you have to love the act of trading. Um, it is nice when there is live trades in play and there is money on the table, um, but at the same time, you should still get pleasure from like I, I took a mock trade today. Um, because I'd already reached what I needed to reach. So I took a mock trade today and it went to AR and I thought, brilliant, wow. not bad. Yeah. That that works. Um, Can't wait till next time. I got, yeah, <laughs> but I got as much pleasure from, and I placed it live in real time. I was watching the candles move and I went, there's my entry and I entered. It was a mock trade, but I still got great satisfaction and pleasure from taking it. If I'm, if I think the people that, a lot of people that fail are the ones that come for the money um, yeah. and realize that, you have to dedicate hours and hours and weeks and months over and over repeating the same things till you get consistent. And I think that's people's problem. They, they give, as, as Roxy said, they give up, um, they drop out, they, they look at it and go, I can probably take my 10 K stick it in an investment, um, account and make mm -hmm. five to 10% a year and leave it and forget about it. And I think people need to, you need to love the art. Otherwise, you know, say, yeah. and for some people, that's the right option. I want to be clear yeah, on that. Yeah. Like, you yeah. come in here and you start yeah. to learn this, and it doesn't resonate for you, it doesn't excite you outside of the money aspect of it. You might not be able to see this through because you're going to face a crud ton of challenges along the way, no matter where you are in your career. Okay, with this, and so I agree with Ian, you have to, you have to love it. And a shout out for why he took that mock trade because you passed your phase one today. I did. Hey. Hey. Yeah, I did. Congrats. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. That's yes. so exciting. Yeah, That's six, awesome. day, six days done. So uh, shout out on being patient enough because like let's be fair, what do most people do? You you pass phase one. What's the very first thing you do? You shoot an email up, you're like, get me my phase two login, and then you like <laughs> jump in instead of just like taking the day to be like, hey, I passed and like tomorrow I'll come back for phase no, two I'm or not, whenever I'm you're not, ready. I'm not trading today. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just want to say congrats to that. And I think that kind of sticking with the patients, like that last P of what we were asking, the patient yeah. aspect, 
you guys hit on that, but also going into transitioning into like another question of mine, which is like the process over like the outcome. I feel like this all can kind of blend, but basically, you know, we talked about being patient and yes, you have to be patient, but then there's this like process over outcome. And I want to get into this a little bit with you guys, because I think that when you talk about being just as excited as taking an eight reward on a demo or a mock up, that shows your your true love for just getting a good markup, learning the skill, being appreciative for the fact that you're like, damn, I found a good trade today. Whether it was <laughs> oh, money or not, the money was is secondary. And I think that when you learn to put that money secondary, and that comes later on, and you learn to say, the money isn't what I'm really here for. Yes, long term, is it here? Yes. But when you have the mentality and you come in with this mentality of like, I want to just learn this skill. I want to learn how to master this because in a couple of years from now, I would love to be able to make a living from doing something like this and have that freedom that day trading gives us all where you can travel the world. And a uh, side note with some of you guys don't know, Roxy got the freedom to like do a whole entire like, road trip, yes, road trip yes. over the whole seven month weeks. Of we yeah. like all of November into some of December. And it was like, I mean, we could talk about it later, but probably <laughs> one of the coolest experiences. And it's like, most people dream to be able to have that kind of freedom for seven weeks to be able to work and travel on the road and have the freedom to explore and do this. Thing. And like, there's a beauty to that. And I think the point is, is when you don't focus so much on, I need this money now. And you think about a future, you're building something for yourself down the road. I guess what I want to say is like this process, right? How would you explain to somebody, because I kind of went on my own rant there, but um, <laughs> the process. No, versus, not you. No, you know, because I'm actually pretty passionate about this question. So you guys yeah. don't know, but Jay and I are alternating questions and I happen to land on this one. And I feel <laughs> when it comes to process and outcome, so I'm going to rant a little longer. I think that as a society and in the world, as a worldly society, um, we are raised most societies, most, you know, of them are raised to always compare yourself on this like grading level, right? You go to school, you get marks or grades, whatever you call it. And everybody is graded and you're constantly comparing yourself to somebody else and what society tells you, you should, what your standard is. And I find that that's a real problem and it's a deep embedded problem for all of us. But I had this problem when I started where I was constantly comparing somebody else who was maybe trading for six months at the time that I was six months in. And I was like, well, how come they're making that much money? And I'm not. And in my head, I had to learn how to like disable that part of my brain that was like, well, it, you know, if they're, it's almost felt like, well, I studied just as hard. Why am I not getting the A and somebody else got, you know, cause this is like how you're bred to think like, you know, this is the standard that we're brought up thinking and comparing your outcome or your journey is it's not helpful. It will actually, I felt it regressed me a lot where I would get yes. frustrated. And when I learned how to be like, you know what, my journey is my journey. My results are my results. My outcome is, is for me, for me personally, and not focus on what's so comparing so, so much to what other I wanna, having role I wanna, models is yeah. good. Having people yeah. you look up to is good, but comparing I find very bad for people so, to do. <laughs> when I joined a community, um, I was so excited and I found great support there. Uh, but one of the things that actually did set me back, and it's exactly what you're touching on there, the testimonies room and seeing other mm. people's success, especially when I was having a bad day was just so mentally draining and challenging. Yeah, a killer. Yeah, exactly. It really is. And it took me a while to understand that I had to mute that room and focus on me and me alone in it's order to tip. keep driving forward, you know? And, and so, yes, you can get in there and congratulate other people, but be aware of how that affects uh, your own journey and your own ability to trade. Um, I have found it's best that, you know, a lot of people want to jump into the community right away while they're trading and having good uh, community is important. But when you're trading, be focused and be present with what you're doing. If yeah. you're trying to do a bunch of other things or uh, be out there seeing what other people are doing, it's going to lead to more emotions. You're going to FOMO into a trade when you see three other people have succeeded that day that yeah. um that you just want to catch up it just leads to more and more of those emotions stacking in so focus on you and and for me and my journey what that meant was um after i blew an account i had a really hard time recovering from that okay um losing real money just made it so much more real and i think rather than you know what you do on a demo when you get to real money and you blow an account for example 
I think that what I found, and I didn't even know it was called process over outcome. I set past the test and that's what I had set to Ian along the way. I set myself past the test. The only job that I had, it wasn't tied to money. It wasn't tied to the outcome of the trade was to execute my trades according to my plan. That was my only job. And to sit there with the emotions and sit there and just wait and execute. My day was successful if I did that. And my day was unsuccessful if I wasn't able to do that. And so what I wanted to do was stack success and stacking that success was stacking each and every day and each and every trade that I could just sit there and just take. And that it didn't matter if it won or lost, it was still successful if I did it according to my plan. And yeah. I gotta be honest, that's the one thing that I can point to that actually got me over the hurdle was yeah. that process same, same, going through. Same with me and what you sat with me. Cause I, I very much, um, I also started similar to Roxy, put like kind of a compliance um, element to it where I would literally on my um, journal, each time I had a positive trade, I would add one to the number. So it would start off at one. And believe me, when you get to like 46 trades successfully executed, you yes. don't want to go back to one. <laughs> so mm -hmm. 47 is sure as hell going to be a, uh, a successfully executed trade. So obviously that's a big part. I also, similar to Roxy, muted. The only time I go in testimonial is when somebody tags me and yeah. says, you know, thank you for your help or, you know, look what I've achieved. And then I'll pop in, go, oh, oh brilliant job, you know, and then mute and straight back out again. Um, but very similar, Roxy sent me that they kind of passed the test. And it is not looking at, it, it is literally, I, I could finish um, two R down for the day um but i could have executed all my trades perfectly and i can live with that that is a win in my book yeah. Um, yeah. i could also be you know 10 r up because i decided to throw 100 lots on nasdaq at open and don't be proud of that yourself for is, that. Exactly, <laughs> no, exactly. that is that is that is and the very worst I, I think i post something quite regular where there's four boxes the top two is uh good process good outcome good process, bad outcome. And then you've got obviously bad process, good outcome and bad process, bad outcome. The very worst one is uh, bad process, good outcome, because that just stacks that confidence that, well, I got away with it this time. So tomorrow when it's open, I'll stick my lots back on NAS and wow. oh, there goes my account. Not only have you lost, you know, a little bit of, but you, and uh, people just, they need to think, you know, just stack the trades, just one after the other, over and over again. And as Roxy said, sit with the emotions. You can't, you can't, a lot of people say, you know, don't feel emotion, hide it, bury it down, stuff it down. I, the worst thing you picked up on it earlier, Christy, where you were saying there is a very different thing about watching candles move and having to be sat in a trade for two hours when it's moving up and down. I found that very difficult. Um, where I was sat watching the candles move up and down. And every time it went, you know, one hour in my favor, I was desperate to move my stop to break even. And then it would come down, tag break even, and then away it went for four or five hour. And I'd be like, well, your process said you sit with it, you you accept it. And I think as long as you're accepting of the outcome, then uh, of the outcome of the trade, uh, as long as you followed your correct process, then take a deep breath, put your big boy pants on and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> watch it watch it do its thing and as long as you or don't watch that it. properly or don't watch it and set and yeah. forget yeah. use alert um, set it and forget yeah. it that, that was yeah. my one with a lot of people have said that and i've said look put an alert at your stop loss put an alert at your take profit and wait for the ping you've just gifted yourself however long that trade is open you've gifted yourself that time yeah. you know go out with the family play playstation go to the gym you know tinker with your car, whatever your passion is, you know, read a book, watch a film. Um, you've essentially not only, you know, entered the trade correctly, but you've gifted yourself an hour of free time, you know, rather yeah. than sitting there like, you know, eyes on store. You're going to fiddle with it. If you, you watch will. it, oh, you yeah, will touch sure. it. You, yeah, yeah. you won't be able to resist it. I, I have yeah, to be honest. So, and the thing is, is that people desire outcome, the money, the car, the whatever it is so much that, um, they forget to live in the now. They forget that you should be bringing the things that you want forward as much as you can. Spend more time with your family. If that's your, if that's the outcome you're desiring is more time with your family, um, take this journey, but don't forget and don't put your family on hold in order to learn. Spend time with your family now. Um, go for those walks. Go to that basketball game. Whatever it is that you're wanting to do in your life, don't forget to live now. Don't forget to take breaks and um, 
I think pulling some of it forward is what also helps us to cope with the fact that it could take a while. You know, don't put your yeah. life on hold. Yeah. I think, Thank um, you for sharing that, guys. Yeah, I appreciate you talking about that. And I, I really love the bad, um, the, the bad process over a good outcome. I just want to quickly touch on that because basically what you're saying is uh, when you're talking about a mind, like true psychology, right? Like real mindset stuff and the way we're engineered, when you take a risk, like we're, in, we're innately built like this, when you take a risk and it results in a positive outcome, you are releasing a higher level of dopamine in, in your brain and you are releasing this, um, this, you know, these hormones that you are just getting this excitement, this reaction, almost like an ecstasy reaction in your brain. It is extremely addictive. It is a very highly addictive thing. It literally falls into gambling at that point. Like you are gambling when you take a bad process and you get a good outcome and your mind has a very hard time when you are doing things like this to separate what actually happened from what gambling is like that, like excitement of it. Right. And uh, we've talked about this before, but my point is, is I just want to kind of highlight that again, is that's a really bad habit to get into and an extremely hard habit to break. If you ask many traders who are high risky traders like that, they, and if they even are still in trading and successful, they will be like, there is a fine line and a very strong mental uh, game that you have to have to be able to control that because those urges will creep in and, it, they're very addictive. So uh, as Ian said, it's very good to acknowledge, like be accountable. Did I break my process and do not celebrate. Even if you make a ton of money on that trade, do not celebrate that trade. You should not be yeah. proud of that trade. If you broke your rules to make it, uh, and there's no real justification for it. So, uh, please be mindful of that because I want to, I feel like people tend to do that a lot. Sometimes, even if they pass a funded account or something got lucky. And then you're like, you, you're never going to, the reality, you're not going to sustain that account now because you didn't do it the right way. Um, you feel so, punished if you, if you do a yeah. bad outcome, uh, bad, bad process, bad outcome. You're like, well, I went against my rules and I got my backside slapped for it. So mm, yeah, that is justified. I shouldn't have done it. And I got, you know, I got suitably chastised for um, going outside of my zone. Um, there is also a great pleasure to be sought when you finish your day and you can look at your five trades, two trades, one trade and go, that was done correctly. And, you yeah. know, it, 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 you take a confidence into the next day. As long as you've done your back testing and you've kind of set your stall out correctly and you're confident in your strategy, then you're going to have good days. You're going to have bad days. But mm -hmm. overall, uh, the whole point is, uh, what is it? Bear always says, you know, you uh, look after the process and the outcome takes care of itself. Yeah. And it really will. If you if, if you execute 100 trades with a good strategy perfectly, you will make money. Uh, yeah. You don't have to worry about making money because it will happen. But I want to touch yeah. on this too, okay, and go back to those emotions and that side of it. You're not going to always execute perfectly. Yeah. Don't think that even once you are successful, you will continue to execute perfectly. We're human. We make mistakes, okay? And you are going to continue over time to occasionally make a mistake. And I think really building a, a solid trader's mindset means that you know how to cope with those mistakes. You know how to accept them and move on and to keep going or, or to recognize that that did affect you and you need to stop. Okay. Because I don't think that like calm, comfy trading means no emotions. It also doesn't mean no mistakes. I make mistakes in my trading occasionally. I'll misread something or my emotions that day are affecting me and I'll take a trade I shouldn't have because I wasn't as patient. But they're the comfy mistakes. You're very comfy. <laughs> yes, yes, okay, yes. You still I, got I your jumper on at the time. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> All right. yeah. uh, just you. to kind of quickly wrap up that execution uh, topic, because interestingly enough, I had no clue, Ian, you were doing this at the time. It was, I think it was a month or two back. And a member had come up to me um, in a DM and he was asking like, hey, like I'm, I'm struggling, like staying with my strategy. I know it's me and like, I, I'm just, I, I can't get over it. And I said, well, why are you so worried about the potential result that never happened yet? I was like, you need to gamify your execution in the sense that I, I was, it was, dude, this is actually scary because I was saying like literally the same things as you. I was like, um, I asked him, I was like, okay, so let's go over your trading plan. Like how many trades do you take a day? So he's like three. I was like, okay, if you win all three trades and you take a fourth trade, that 
cuts out all the points that you accumulated that entire day. Exactly. Uh, if you if you yep. hold more reward than you normally do, that cuts it. It doesn't matter if it was positive. I was like, you could lose all three trades, but if if you if you took all three trades to your plan, that's still three points. So I was like, it's two birds, one stone. You control your emotions at that time for each individual trade. Yes. Also, you could finally and objectively see if, if it's truly you or if it's truly the strategy. Because the majority of the time people strategy hop and subconsciously, they don't realize they're implementing fear and greed and they're messing up all their strategy rules without even knowing. It'd be like, oh, I, I executed perfectly this month. I don't know what happened. I was like, I guarantee if you go back and objectively back test like you're normally doing whatever you traded live, you made so many mistakes. I've done it myself too. Like there, there was plenty of times where I struggled during an entire month during a challenge account that I was able to get a free retry, thankfully. But I go back, I'm like, oh, I would have passed in three days. Like the first three days. Was I, what was I thinking entering there? Yeah. But I will say yeah. like that. This is the guy who said huge. mindset's not real. Just so you guys heard that. <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I, like, just want, I just want to pick fun at them. We all, we all. No, no, just but um, <laughs> also what I will say, Ian and Roxy are going to be proud of this. And y'all might not even know about this in the sense that once I stumbled upon something called the mirror principle, everything kind of changed for me to where your inner reality is your outer reality's reflection in the sense that whatever you tell yourself like words truly have power yes you have words to be matter. careful when you say i am like because whenever you say that that means you cannot change that it's better to say like you have the tendency to do this or you have that but in the sense that for example and a lot of people i'm just going to go over trading examples because i guarantee you everybody has been here in the sense that you come up with the strategy, sure. And uh, let's say you're trading New York session and then you're just, you can't stand not being on the charts. You're an addict at that point. And you just, let's say like, I'm talking like for Americans. So New York times during the day. So let's just say like you're doing nothing. You're very bored. Maybe watching Netflix. You pull up the charts, looking at Asian, and be like, oh damn, if I would have, if I would have been here, this followed all my rules, I would have missed that. Or you enter a trade during New York with your rules and it hits your stop loss, but you continue watching it just to see what it would have done if you would have placed a better stop loss. I used to be a victim of this so hard, but like changing my like inner reality of being more positive and it affecting my positive and affecting my outer reality is, is the simple fact that now I'll look at it and be like, oh, that's awesome. Like, all the rules that I like added I'm, I didn't take this trade but like I mean I can't stop winning if I would if I would have done that <laughs> if I was like I don't dwell on the past it excites me because it's like okay well these are gonna come in the future for sure if this is always happening like now instead of like uh oh I missed another 10 percent day like, what yeah. am I gonna like it's it's never gonna happen like this again when it's for sure gonna happen like that it's gonna yeah, happen so you're gonna you're gonna you you that's why I said you have to enjoy the art. You have to get as much pleasure from a mock trade or whatever as you do from a, uh, a live trade. Um, and once you start to see that and you start to get that, like you said, you look at it and go, well, I might not have got it this time, but next time when I do that, it's going to be, or, you know, you know, it will come in the future. If, if I'm spotting it now, then I will mm -hmm. spot it in the future. And it might not be a eight R trade today, but it'll sure as hell be a five R trade another day. And that was our recent uh, mindset short was on coming back from break, which was really relevant to everybody coming back after the holidays. It's having the right mindset and getting yourself back into that mindset that's being present on the charts and enjoying the process. And I think those that do succeed actually do enjoy the process. I enjoy just sitting watching the charts sometimes, even if I'm not going to trade, you know, I agree. see what's I there, am. see what it's doing. I want to just say I'm pretty proud of you, Jay. Like, I'm pretty oh, proud that you did that whole, like, inner not. outer reflection thing. Don't like, make me I'd, blush. I'm like, you threw me for that. Like, I did not know he was going to say that. And I'm <laughs> impressed. Like, I don't There's know what you did. a lot of things did. under the sleeve, Chris. I'm I don't know what you know. did over break, but maybe you did some, like, inner working or something. Anyway. Oh, boys I wanted... better not. A, a gentler, happier Jay. Oh, it's so weird. Anyway. Um, Stop, you're so, making my third eye blush. <laughs> so I want to kind of say like we're not saying you have to be on there like giving yourself in the mirror like affirmations I mean you don't have to go that extreme but it is important to not be so negative on yourself or too hard on yourself but also be real though don't also be like ah it's fine like I you know next time like you should be honest with yourself about your performance but be um 
be very as realistic and unbiased as you can about it. If you messed up, you messed up. If you, and you didn't follow your rules, you did. You didn't follow them and just own that, you know? If you, you I know, call it giving ourselves grace. Okay. Yeah, that's a really because nice way of explaining it. You're Thank going, you. you're going to mess up. That's yeah. just a reality. And the sooner you accept both that you make mistakes and that you can fail and learn how to do so, I think, I think that's really important skills to have both and in trading, but also life. Sorry, yeah, I was going to say the reality of this world is trading is tough because I mean, as though, even though we're saying don't focus on the money, the reality of it is there is money involved here and yes. there can be pretty large money involved when you get to a certain point where it could feel very stressful to lose at certain times or be negative a certain percentage or something like that. And I think finding a healthy outlet without getting too like holistic, -y, uh, you know, cause I know that's not everybody's vibes and stuff, but I think finding like a healthy outlet when you're having a bad day or you're feeling like maybe your psychology is a little bit off. Maybe your mindset's a little bit off. I think having some sort of outlet that you have um, to be able to like use is, is, really good so whether you have a hobby you like whether it's an activity you like whether uh you know like meditating dog cuddles, I'm pretty, dog cuddles yeah I was gonna, i'm pretty <laughs> big on meditating but not like you yes. know i'm not sitting on the ground with my chakras all aligned kind of meditating i'm more like a, that'd be pretty funny know, though i mean i, I do <laughs> I yoga and stuff I, i'm a big yoga fan <laughs> like, I do like yoga. Question mark? um but i know i mean i am like a yoga person and all that like i so i don't want to come off that way because i know people are gonna roll their eyes gonna be like oh god not one of these lectures but I, I'm, I think it is I do important. walking meditations. Do you do that? Yeah. It's, I mean, yeah, I do a lot same, of meditating. But I'm I golf, actually, so. <laughs> same, but, it's the same thing. I walk the course is walking meditation. Okay. But That's that counts. Fun. All I'm trying to say is you don't need to be like so serious about the meditating part of it. Like yeah. where you're like, Oh, it's whatever it is that allows you to just turn your brain off and just give yourself, I guess, give yourself that grace period. Give yourself that time to say, just let me shut everything down for a minute and just kind of like reflect. You don't need to reflect on your trading and all that. Just be peaceful with yourself. So that way you can kind of let those emotions, if you are in a high emotional state right now, like, or were in a high, like give your body a chance to just kind of come back to like an equilibrium, kind of recoup and then like come back fresh, you know, when you're ready. I think not a lot of people do that. Um, but I am pretty big on that myself and you know, I'm pretty busy. So like I do it in the morning, like I make it a, a point to really be good about that because I found um, just for reference, like, you know, my problem is, is and Jay knows is I, I'm a bit of a workaholic. So once I start, I won't stop. So my big problem I'd have like most, you know, most people with social medias and uh, anything like that, like, or stuff like this discord, to me is like a social media. The minute I would check Discord in the morning before I'm even out of bed, I'd be glued to it answering questions because like, you know, I'm a helper and I'm a giver and I end up giving too much of myself at times instead of learning how to cut myself off. And then next thing I know, four or five hours go by, I'm still answering questions. I never traded. I haven't gotten a shower yet. Like I haven't even like made my bed. Like those things happen. And then I get frustrated with myself yeah. and like it would escalate. So I had to start learning how to take like 15, 20 minutes in the morning to just lay in bed and just like quietly do whatever I want to do. Sometimes it is listening to a like a meditative thing. Sometimes I'm, it's just staring out way, my window. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I had the exact um, same issues actually, Christy. Um, and I feel but, like, I, oh, thank you. And I, yeah. so I want to feel, I feel like I want to kind of transition this to one of my questions for you guys, because the life is busy. Um, and I, I feel like I want to kind of pull this question in before, I have two more questions that I want to ask you guys, but I want to pull this question in because I know that Roxy, you were busy. Uh, Ian, you work full time. Jay, you're not busy, but um, <laughs> I'm testing. I, golf. That's what he's busy with. No, um, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just messing with him. He is busy. I keep. Hey, busy. before you transition, can I actually mention something? So oh, yeah. a lot of people end up focusing on and, and thinking uh, med uh, meditation is very woo woo. Uh, a I'm really doing. quick, it's not. it's not, but a it's really not. quick tip for people, okay, is take a break, step away. But the other side of that is if you're going to sit there, um, look up how to do deep breathing. Okay. It's a really fast way to calm your nervous system and emotions back down. Like maybe in, in seals moment. use this. Like, let's yes. be like, like, it's a real thing. Let's be real. I, um, <laughs> I doesn't want to be a baby. So, seal. 
so I was a nurse and I, so you guys know, although I was a nurse, but I used to do ICU and trauma nursing. So uh, you see some really emotional things and some crazy things would walk through. It was truly a technique they made us learn. You would have to learn how to do it because you would have to be able to quickly calm yourself in a, a very panicky situation. You can't be yes. panicking when there is an emergency. So it was a breathing technique that we had to learn. And it's something I've always taken with me. And I love that tip. So no, you don't need to be obviously in a super panicky situation, but if you are finding yourself like hyperventilating, or maybe you lost a really big trade, you lost a ton, or, you know, a lot of you guys do this whole, uh, oh, that was my last shot. I had to, that's all I had. Like if you're in one of those moments, take, take our advice here, take the deep breaths, go quiet yourself down, maybe go like, just quiet your, your emotions. Do not go back in the market. Yeah. and do something even stupid like dumb right don't do it do. yeah um but i love that thank you because yeah the it's not all hocus pocus the meditating stuff i know jay i, I can't even believe he did the mirror thing but i mean i know jay doesn't really believe in all well, that it's the mirror stuff. principle i'm not looking at myself in the mirror and be like <laughs> you got this bro <laughs> I know you're not, but some people might find that helpful. I don't do that either, but I do like, I I am a big believer on just taking some quiet time for yourself and like reflecting because life can get really busy and, you know, uh, you can get sucked into the world of like social medias and the charts and discords and things like that. And next thing you know, like you haven't really had that time for yourself to really like process what has happened in that day or the feelings that maybe you need to process correctly and it carries over into the next day so um what we mean by taking a break is it could be whatever it means to you it doesn't need to be like you yeah, know meditation the whole meditating isn't, thing, isn't saying, like but. just well also i will say that i guess i can consider this a type of meditation i used to do this but then i got lazy in the mornings but whenever i whenever i used to wake up i would go straight to my computer and it's like a brain dump almost to where you either type for like 10 minutes straight or you try and go for like 700 ish words. And you don't, it doesn't really matter about grammar sentences, but you literally just type out all your thoughts. It does not matter if it's relevant or not, but it's just like everything you might be worried about, what you're excited about, what you're scared about, what you fear, what you're hopeful for, blah, blah, blah. whatever you think in that morning. And then after you're done, it's almost like, uh, I guess you can like consider it like clearing out your cache or cache, however you pronounce it, like, it, like in your phone or your computer or anything. Yeah. But it's like, it's it's kind of an interesting, because I, I would consider that meditation as well, because you're dumping out all the random thoughts that probably just don't matter. And then like, you're fully like cleansed, I guess is a good well, word not for drive. I will, I will <laughs> I would count agree that, that for you, Jay. <laughs> I will allow that to count for you. <laughs> No, I think actually that is a form of meditation because what I learned about meditation is it's not sitting there and necessarily being quiet is it's how it's, it's learning methods that do quiet your mind. That's why you can do things like walking meditation and just noticing the things around you and just being present in the moment. Um, it's, yeah, I'm it's a what big nature does... lover too. So I do yeah. do the walking meditation and I also just sit, like I have a really beautiful window in my bedroom and like, yeah. sometimes I just sit there and I listen to nature and it's like, one of the most beautiful and most, it's like the most simplistic thing you can do, but like also super complex. And this is another rant, sorry guys. But I love watching nature because it's like something you take for granted every day that's happening around you. And like, if you just watch like birds and like squirrels and like just everyday animals just out there doing their natural thing. And it's just like, beautiful to hear all the noises. Just, it's a very, from my mind, it's a very calming thing. And- um, What's the world go by? Yeah, it's just, you know, because we're also wrapped up in your everyday stuff. But like when you watch these little animals, anyway, I just always watch them and I'm like, look how busy they are. And like, nobody even knows. You guys are both, uh, you know, you both have families yourselves, as we've heard. And, you know, Roxy, congratulations. Now we haven't officially congratulated you, but congratulations on being a full time day trader. That is so exciting. But when you got into trading and we're learning it, you were working full time uh, and, you know, also busy as well. And Ian, you still are working full time as well as working part-time for us with the trading floor, as well as learning how to trade and also having a family. So my question for you guys is, and a question that we get a lot is, how do you manage it all? Like, what would be some advice or tips or tricks for people who are looking to get into trading or learning this as a hobby, a side, you know, income maybe for now, potentially to take over as a full-time income, but how do they time manage all this? Because of big struggle for people is how do you still maintain your everyday life which can be very busy as you know your families grow and your lives get you know more complicated with you know children and things like that what would you recommend to people as far as how do they make this all work 
so, I think, uh, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, um, I'm going to start with a book recommendation for people. Um, oh, I love that. Um, we love yeah, reading here. Yeah. So that book <laughs> recommendation is Atomic Habits. It's a really big one. Oh, I yeah. shared it with uh, Ian Backaways. One cool. percent um, matters. So finding the time to spend. And I started out with just 20 minutes on one single trading skill every single day. And that if you can find 20 minutes, which most people can stop watching a show for 20 minutes, or, you know, they How can stay up 20 you. minutes later at night. I know, right? <laughs> um, they can find 20 minutes to practice a skill over and over and over again until their mind sees a pattern, for example, or they're able to just to, to see that take place on a chart, learn market structure, whatever it is, finding a small piece of time carved out each day that you consistently do over and over and over again. And once you have one skill down, you stack another one onto it and you keep building. And though that little 1% gains each and every day stacked up will actually net you the skills over time. Yes, can somebody have four hours to dedicate to it because they work say a part-time job and they can spend more time on it than you? Sure, that may be the case, but you will still get to the same spot that they're at and that they're getting to if you are able to carve out that same uh, a small chunk of time. So that is my recommendation is the Atomic Habits. And then the other one is a book called The One Thing. And that book really focuses on finding the one thing that matters to you most and dedicating your time and focus to that. Because the thing is, is that real world life is that we're pulled in a million different directions. And frequently we forget how to say no to things and we forget to actually pour ourselves into the things that matter to us most, um, rather than allowing ourselves to get distracted. You mentioned it earlier, social media and getting lost in that and so forth. I could rant about that forever, you guys. <laughs> I, you guys have all heard me rant about it. And I, I mean, I think there's some beauty to it. Social media, I think you can learn anything online. And if you're using it for educational purposes or you're using it um, you know, in that kind of way to like help better yourself, it's great. It's a fantastic resource. Yeah. But I also think that the reality of it is there's a lot of just like BS entertainment stuff mm. out there. And I wouldn't oh, even yeah. call it entertainment. It's just, it's just junk content to, yeah. to purposely lure you in and, and keep you on these platforms longer watching. And that's the kind of stuff where like Roxy's saying, like there's time to be, like, if you looked at your phone screen time, You'd probably be appalled Scary. if you had the weekly reports. <laughs> yeah. And I do look at them. I have the weekly remind like comes up every week. So I know. And, and you know, I'm somebody who really does work on the phone and on a computer a lot. So obviously my times are high, but I do do it for all my apps. So that way I'm keeping myself in check a little bit. Like, yeah, you're spending way too much time. Like, why would you even be on that app? Like, what yeah. are you even doing on there? Yeah. So I think there is definitely somewhere to be, there's time to always be carved out. Um, and a lot and so, of yeah, whether like you... a social media or like TV. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, you could make some time somewhere, even 10 yeah. minutes before bedtime, read a little bit of that, those books you're saying, find out. Yeah. And then once you finish the books, replace it with 10 minutes of just learning, watching one of the 10 minute videos on the discord or whatever you want to, you know, uh, or yeah. not discord, the website, or you know, just replace it with something else. Um, I agree with that. The small steps will add up to progress for sure. Yeah. And so, learning how Learning the practice of learning and learning how to better yourself is a skill that you can take into any facet of your life, not just yep. here in trading. Yeah. So 100%. I really do think uh, and believe in habit stacking. That made a big difference to me. Yeah, um, I do too. And, and, carving out, uh, and carving out that time. Whether you have a family, uh, whether you have kids, it is just about finding that small chunk of time. And a lot of people come into it thinking, I need to find a couple hours. You don't need to find a couple hours. That's not what's necessary to get you started in this. Yeah, and well, over awesome. time, over time, you might find another 20 minute chunk of time. And all of a sudden you've got 40 minutes in your life uh, to spend yeah. or in each day to spend on it. So I think it's maneuvering as well, isn't it? And finding, I, I have a 45 minute commute each way to work in the morning. So I drive I've 45 there, minutes, I do my day and then I drive 45 minutes home and Audible has been my godsend. So basically in the past, I would have stopped music on and some days I do. Sometimes I'm looking at it going, do you know what? I don't want to learn today or I don't want to uh, better myself. All I want to do is listen to thrash metal and stick it on and <laughs> be happy. But um, yeah, but a lot of most of the time I will be listening to trading books, trading in the zone, um, best loser wins, atomic habits, all that sort of stuff. And I found that 
I've basically got an hour and a half where, because I, I don't have time to read. I don't really have time to sit down at night in bed or, you know, with a book and just spend two or three hours reading a book. But I can spend an hour and a half listening to a book every day. And mm. I've found that, and you know, it's what, an hour and a half a day, five days a week, that, that adds up. Um, also, my uh, daughter and wife are quite keen on uh, sleeping in on the weekend. So I'm a bit of a, uh, a bit of a, I, I don't do lions. So by, you know, nine o'clock on a Saturday morning, I'm generally up there, generally in bed till half 10, 11. And I will literally just sit on the charts, do my back testing, watch some videos, maybe record some mm -hmm. content. It, it, it's finding you will have times in your day, in your week, whether that means you're getting up an hour earlier or whether that means you, you know, rather than listening to music in the car, sticking a book on, you will find time, as Roxy said, and it doesn't have to be two hours, three hours a day, but you will find that you, you can spend time either bettering yourself or, you know, dedicating to your craft or, you know, enjoying. I listen to car podcasts as well. It's not just all trading. So, you know, whether it be podcasts or something along those lines, just make sure you carve out time for yourself. No, I agree with that. I think there's some sacrificing. You will have to be aware there. You may have to give up some of the things you don't want to meet that you find maybe enjoyable or relaxing, but you know, you have to, again, go back to this like overall outcome. What is your overall goal? What is your overall outcome? And you can't expect to get there and not sacrifice a little bit. Like I've sacrificed a lot to be able to get where I'm at. And, uh, uh, you know, I've sacrificed a lot of friends and friendships and things that I've given up time with, with people who didn't really understand like what you're doing. And, you know, those are things that you have to look at and say like, you know, at the end of it all, like, is this still going to be worth it to make maybe these time sacrifices, give up certain things. And I think there, most of us at some point do something throughout the day that you could probably say, yeah, I could take a few minutes away from that. Um, or, I mean, if you're really that busy, if you have a lunch break or something, like Ian just said, put on a podcast, listen to it while you're at lunch eating. Like there's, there's always time to like, even if you can't read the book there, you could do the audio books or something like that, or uh, listen to somebody, you could prop your phone up and watch a video while you're on your lunch break or something like that. There's always time to find a way to make an extra 10, 20 minutes in a day, if that's even all you have. Um, but so, that will make an impact. So thank yes. you. Yeah, I, I think that does actually segue well to a point I want to make. So if you can't find time to learn how to trade, how are you going to find time to trade? Okay. Exactly. It's also a great time as you're learning to watch for the times where you might actually have a chunk of time that you can trade. So as you develop your strategy out and you learn how to trade, you can focus on things that work well during that time that you will actually have to trade. Don't assume, hey, I can come in for the entirety of New York session, for example, um, if you right. don't have time to trade that. So for me, that was, I'm going to get up earlier. I'm going to be on for, let's say, pre-New York and part of New York session because that's when I can do it ahead of starting work. Can we all you know? give Roxy some credit here? Let's give Roxy a huge shout out because I don't want to say where you are, but Roxy is on the West coast of the U.S. So what that means to wake up for New pond. York. And Alp is across the pond. But for her to wake up pre-New York session, can we talk about what hour in the morning that means you're waking never, up? I would never, I would never. 4.30 in the morning. Oh, 4.30 in the morning. Oh, so geez. shout out to Roxy. So those of you who are like, so this is what we're talking about. giving up, up some. up six. Yeah, Jay, learn something from Roxy here, please. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> but for, for real, like, let's talk about like this segues into what we're saying. You have to give up something a little bit. Your determination yes. and will to want to do this was I have to wake up at 4.30 in the morning. Did you want to wake up at 4.30 in the morning no. every day? No, no. not at all. <laughs> Why well, she no. just every day. Um. <laughs> and, and I, myself, when I was learning, I used to have to wake up for London because I was a nurse. I had to be in work at 7 a.m. So even though I am East Coast, you know, I'm like Philadelphia, New Jersey area. I'm on that time zone, New York time, for those of you who don't understand that. Um, that's like, for me, that meant I had to be up also at 3 a.m. I had to be up for London yeah. session to trade before I even got to work. I had to give that up because I had to have money coming in before I could walk away from a job. So yes. you have to learn where you're, you're willing and able to sacrifice. And I think that that's something, um, there is going to be some sacrificing here that you guys have to be willing to do. And if you're not able to do it, you're not willing to, then trading just may not be for you. And that's okay. Like we said, there's other ways you can invest and do things that you can still make money from, but just don't 
don't th- expect to come in and be like, well, I'm just going to sit down and trade for 10 minutes and that's all I need to do every day. And I don't have to give anything up. And like, it doesn't work like that. None of us got to where we are because we didn't sacrifice at some point or, uh, or have to really dedicate ourselves to this. So that's my and learn. There are different ways to trade. There's swing trading and there's scalping and there's intraday trading. Part of your journey is finding which one of those is going to fit not only your personality, but the time you can spend. Too. Exactly. So just kind of bringing this back around town. Uh, it's very cool seeing Ian and Roxy, how y'all are passionate about mindset. And so uh, speaking on that behalf, just kind of wrapping up a little bit, what um, this coming year, like what are y'all excited about uh, for mindset and what kind of content will y'all be bringing to the community? What will we be expecting in the community? Because I kind of know, but nobody else really knows yet. So what what will we be getting? And what will we be getting soon? We can like spoil alert a little bit. Spoiler. Ian? We are genuinely excited. We have um, spent some time preparing a mindset journal and um, the way it works and we will go into it in more depth in the uh, very near future. There will be a video dropped on um, the ideas behind it. But basically the idea is that you will have um, you've got your normal journal, which I suspect most of you will have it electronically or you'll have it on an, uh, you know, Google Sheets where you'll put down, you know, I entered this trade here, 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 it won, it lost. We've decided that it would be a good idea to have a sheet for each trade. So you essentially have a sheet for say, say you write down today's date, 17th, the first 23, trade number one, um, entered at 11 o'clock, um, felt good about trade, was perfectly to my strategy. And then comes to 12 o'clock, feeling quite anxious during trade, uh, desperate to move stop loss, but fighting the urge. And basically you will write down your thoughts during that trade. At the end of that trade, you will give your mindset a score. And there's also um, a section to put an emoji. So you could put, you know, I was happy, I was chilled, I was anxious, I was angry, I was frustrated. Um, So each time you take a trade, you will basically have a separate sheet for each trade. And then at the end of the day, you have a overall outcome for the, you know, for the view. So maybe you can talk a little bit about the, uh, the final sheet for the end of the day, Roxy. Yeah, yeah, that one's really reflective of what I do every day in my practice and and discipline journaling uh, about my mindset. And that is basically it track you're not only going to track like how many trades you took and whether you micromanage them but you're going to focus on rating say the top three mindset things that you're focused on for example if you're working on um fomo for example then you're going to rate out how you did that day and sticking to not fomoing to, into trades and your emotions around that and so forth and then you're also going to um rate out on there because I think it's incredibly important something that you are grateful for that day because I really think that you need to I start my day by actually listing out what I'm grateful for oh, okay Roxy, because... me and you are like meditative soul sisters I'm just <laughs> I'm like the yeah. same way I'm like a lot of my affirmations are all like grateful things because I'm extremely grateful yeah. whoever you believe in whatever your religion is regardless like I think that it's so important to always give thanks for what you have because there's somebody even if you're in the worst day ever there's somebody in the world who would kill to be even in your worst day you know what I mean there's always somebody who's going through something worse than you so I think it's so important to be grateful for where you're at and even the small little things even on a bad day be grateful for the fact that you even got that bad day you know what I mean so anyway I'm big on the gratefulness thing too I think it's important (laughs) yeah so in there on that page at the end of the day you're finishing out your trading by saying something you're grateful for and then you're talking about something the other the flip side of that is something that you can improve not what you did wrong, focus on what you can improve in yourself in your trading that day. Just write down one thing, you know, but I love the that focus it's improvement too. just yes. so going back to like not talking to yourself in a negative way. When you say I did something wrong, you're, yeah. you're thinking it puts that, that stigma in your mind that, oh, like I'm Positive bad, I'm wrong, I'm like, well. right. Mm-hmm improvement is like oh your mind can process that a little bit differently as like oh i i need to improve on something i didn't do something wrong necessarily and just okay what could i do better and i love that too i think there's like these small little things that people don't realize when you're talking about psychology that like make a big impact on you um when it comes to your trading so thank you keep going i say it as i say it as words matter and they Mm -hmm. really do so yeah and this is a lonely journey and the reality is like yeah we have a great community and we have mindset room but you 
are the one who is going to be the most impactful on your own self when it comes to trading because it is such a solo thing. So the way your your mind is talking to yourself or you know you're reading your own mind and your own thoughts is extremely impactful when it comes to this and you know I think that that's really important to make sure that you guys you know are being careful with how you're you're wording things in your head to yourselves um, yeah. when it comes to this stuff. Yeah, so these are printable sheets and we put together a few kind of fun covers that you can create for yeah. your journal. But anyway, these are printable sheets. And so you create, use these uh, and we have an extra sheet that allows you to just take notes basically as well. So you print these out and you create your own journal. So if you need, you know, five of the, the one page trade uh, tracker type thing and one of the, the um, mindset reviews at the end, you create out your journal each and every day, how it fits, um, how you're going to track your trades and how you're going to track your mindset. Um, and so we really feel like based on the feedback that we were getting, people are really desiring an ability to not only track their trades, but their mindset to go with it. And I think this will be uh, a very helpful tool. This is your space to be accountable to yourself. And um, touching on accountability, uh, it's a really good idea not only in the community, but find somebody who you can directly talk with about this trading and how you did that day and somebody who's going to ask you the tough questions. I think that's an important factor is accountability. Yeah. So. Accountability, find somebody who will not be uh, you know, bias when they're looking at your data and your entry and your, or, you know, whatever it is you did. Like Jay said, he was kind of like, Oh, if he was a little with his stuff, he was talking about like if he had been a little like, eh, and he's like, if I went back and I was a little more subjective about it, I probably would have done better. So having that person who will be clearly subjective and not afraid to hurt your feelings a little bit, like, you know, objective. don't be brutal on each other. Objective. I apologize. Thank you. <laughs> objective. <Sorry. laughs> But you get what I'm saying. You guys understand. Yeah. Um, you don't want to be subjective in your trades. You want someone who will be objective about what you did. And do you want to make sure that you guys are finding a person who will be brutally honest in a nice yes. enough way? Don't sugarcoat it, but yeah. don't be, uh, find somebody who's not afraid to be like, oh, I think, you know, maybe you did good. And you're like, no, 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 you did not do good. Somebody who's going to check you because some people need not tough love, but a little bit of that like reality check because, I you know. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, and I think that you guys are great at doing that for one another. So thank you for sharing it. This whole like test thing that you guys have going, I think is great. Yeah. And uh, basically these journals kind of are like that. It, I think essentially it's like you guys just having it out now to the community for them to be able to check themselves and yes. kind of test themselves in and test themselves out of what they, you know, are, should they have taken that trade or not? And they can, you can still do it in conjunction with the TTF journal that we guys give you. That's like where you're actually going to put all the statistics and the data that you're gathering. But this is like the emotional aspect of it and being real. And it's good to collect that because you also can then correlate it with your actual journals and be like, is there a pattern here? Like, did I say I wasn't at my fullest or was I a certain emotion or something on this day or whatever? And then happened to notice that I don't do as well or something like that. And, you know, it's just another way to kind of track yourselves, especially if you feel like we were talking about in the beginning, maybe the analytics and everything are coming easy to you, but there's something going on when you sit down at the live mindset wise, that's like really messing you up psychology wise. And if that's you, then this journal will definitely be very beneficial for you. I think yeah, it was a very powerful Sorry, go ahead. Now I was just saying we're excited to drop it. Yeah, yeah. it's a yeah. very powerful tool. It is something that helped me out a lot. I couldn't find the correlation between what was happening in live market until I started journaling and understanding the emotions that were playing and, and understanding what was going on in my life and how that affected my trading. And so I think it is very powerful in that aspect, but it's also, like I said, when you're tracking, like let's say you have a mindset thing like FOMO that you're tracking, you can see the improvements you're making day by day in that. Whereas if you aren't journaling it, it's really hard to see the actual improvement. Um, yeah. So I, I think uh, I think taking that approach and actually being able to see it is going to be very powerful. I, I completely well, agree. Thank you well, so guys, much for sharing this. Uh, this has been an amazing podcast. And I feel like the best way we kind of ended on the best note of self accountability, because at the end of the day, if you can't keep yourself um, like if you can't keep yourself like motivated and on topic, like you're going to struggle, like not nobody's outside words are going to truly be able to mm -hmm. like bring you profitability. You have to you have to find it in yourself to be able 
to be profitable in this training. But if you need help and guidance with it, check us out in the mindset room because we can help guide you. Exactly. (laughs) That's where we live. Yeah, it's just the Uh, chemistry. The chemistry is here. Yeah, I mean, (laughs) but but guys, no, all jokes aside, with that being said, this concludes uh, episode one of season two of the train floor podcast and we want to give a shout out to roxy and ian as well for coming on because it's early for roxy it's extremely late for ian as you can tell in the background so it's what do we got back there in amazon are we like shouting out that is an amazon factory oh Oh, massive amazon Amazon Amazon. warehouse (laughs) i don't work there if um, you are if you are listening on Spotify or Apple, please feel free to follow our podcast. That way you don't miss out on anything. If you're on YouTube, smash that like button, subscribe. And with that being said, stay safe and happy trading. Peace. Yeah, thank you guys. Yes, got you. This is a side note. I had a bird's nest that I had in the spring. Yeah. They like built it on my reef. Mama and I was like Kings. fascinated. I was I was fascinated by these little birds. Oh I was so goodness. excited. I was like sending pictures. He's like, okay. And I was like, I just, I went and got a camera and I like watched them because I was like, <laughs> but it was honestly such a beautiful thing. And like a weirdly enough was like a meditative thing for me to just be like, wow, like you're like the little problems that I have. I was like, this bird just built an entire nest from shit in like a day and I'm looking at so intricate and I'm like that's so impressive and like here I am whining about a lost trade or something you know like the things just like worry about the reality. Amazon lady like throwing the package and hitting yeah the you know and, like, that's the kind of stuff you get caught up in you're like this bird literally just built an entire house for her future children in one day <laughs> and like what did I do <laughs>